Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, <clears throat> we've been talking a little bit about expectation already this morning, so we can keep that up. And uh, why don't we just uh, come to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you this morning for your word. Thank you that it is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Lord, teach us something. Teach us something that we don't know. Let, us, uh, let our eyes see th- and our hearts see and discern um, what only you can bring us. We just ask you to open our hearts and that we wouldn't be just led by our senses and only what we could uh, understand naturally. But, Father, thank you for the impartation uh, of your word. Your words are spirit and they are life to us. And we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, <clears throat> I want to get started here uh, this morning. Um, but before, we, before I do, actually, uh, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re- re- be reminded of this. It's important for us to remember... Uh, where we are, you know, uh, where we are. How many of you know it's important um, to, for you to know that you ever, have you ever done this? Have you ever went to Walmart in your slippers? You know, like, you're like, dad, gummit, and you're like, oh, shoot. You get in your car. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had that dream that you might be in a place with, you know, I don't know, just not everything clothed, not the way that you should be? Like going to church, I actually had this happen before. I was in shorts and I had gotten my top on and everything, but I was studying and I got in the truck and I had shorts on and a top on for church and it just it was not, it was just basketball shorts. It, it's important for you to know and I to know uh, where we're at because where you're at determines you know how you act, right? Or what you wear or what you do or don't. And it's important for us to remember that this is God's house. That when we come together, we're gathering for, for his glory. We're coming to, to meet with him. And, you know, above the door, there's this statement that you might, you might not have even ever seen it. Maybe sometimes you, once you've seen it, you, it's like in your house. You, that picture's there all the time, and you just forget that it's even there. But your expectation is an invitation for God to move. And so expectation, an invitation that, for God to move in this place. And one of the things <clears throat> that I, I talked to our serve team this morning about, and I'm going to be talking about it just to try to hit everybody, is just the culture of this house being one of honor. Um, how we treat one another. How, Like if somebody is hearing from the Lord and the Lord is speaking to them, please don't interrupt him. So that, that's like uh, getting up to go to the bathroom in, the, in an hour service, you know. Um, if you got the runs, then, you know, might sit towards the edge and, get, you know, run on out there. But it's as important, you know. Um, you know, when, when to open a mint, when not to open a mint. You don't understand what I'm saying? These are just cultural things of honor. It's not legalism. It's just things that are, that are important. Um, you know, if your coffee gets cold and, and we're in the presence of the Lord, um, just one, God, just hold on a sec. I need to go get some coffee. Um, and we're, we'll just come back in here. You know, this is, I mean, we created a culture of comfort because we enjoy having coffee and those kind of things. But I'm telling you, it can't move to a place of dishonor. And so just I want to bring that back because the limiting factor, the one limiting factor that limited Jesus from being able to do what he was wanting to do, desiring to do, was honor or lack thereof. And so I just, I don't want to be, uh, in a sense, counterproductive, like trying to fill a bucket with holes in it. And, um, and when we're here, we're coming to meet with him and hear from him and, uh, he, and give him the honor that's due his name. All right. So did you hear about the lady that got arrested recently? I'm already going to laugh. You didn't hear? Who told me that? Somebody. Somebody's. I want to talk to that person. You haven't heard? Okay. Well, this lady, she was in the grocery store, and t- times were really tight. Economics have been, you know, uh, a little tight. And so um, uh, she got arrested for stealing a can of peaches. And so she had to stand before the Lord, or not before the Lord, but before the judge. And the judge was very understanding of the economic times. And, and her story was, sir, uh, your honor, I, I normally wouldn't do this. And her husband's holding her hand, you know, there. And she said, but we have our three children. And, and uh, the judge says, well, you know, in light of that, and, and, and I understand and that you're trying to provide for, for your family. He said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to see how many peaches were in that can. And I'm going to have you serve that many days of sentence. You know, and she's like, "Oh, thank you, Your Honor." And and so, uh, come to find out, there was eight eight uh, can eight uh, peaches in that can. And um, her husband spoke up and said, "Your Honor, she also stole a can of peas." 
thought that was pretty funny. I heard that recently, and they tell it probably better than I did, but I thought that was pretty good. You know, she stole a, she stole a can of peas also, Your Honor. Um, so put her away for a little longer. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Hey, we're going to we're gonna actually be kicking off a series this morning. Um, and, and let me just give you the heart behind when we say series. I think, um, I think that in this, in, the, in this day and age of, of, of church and church attendance, where church has become, uh, you know, in a sense, got to try to attract people to God, whether it's through smoke and mirrors and lights or or giving away Game Boys or iPads or big screen TVs. You're like, Game Boys? Yeah, because this has been happening for like 20 years, all right? Um, where we're, we're the, the things of God, um, uh, they're only about this valuable compared to all the other things, you know? Um, and so we, we, we package series, and we're like, oh, here's some cool artwork for a series, and we're going to like throw it out there. Here, come here about, whoa, I don't know, like... Just we come up with great names for things and all that kind of stuff, and I, I don't don't dis, I'm not discounting creativity, and I'm not discounting packaging, and I'm not discounting wrapping and all that kind of stuff. Those things are good; they're important. How many of you like to get a birthday present that is just like, oh, here it is, versus one that is wrapped? There's just there's honor in that. So that there is preparation in those kind of things that that I believe is necessary uh, for expectation to be set, but ultimately. The reason why we, we are doing a series or a set of teachings is because we need to get something into this house. We need to get something into our lives. We need to get something into families and marriages. We need to get something into our, that we take away from here. We got to get something that, 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 that the Lord is wanting us to own so that we can um, navigate our way. The Bible tells us that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when we talk about the, the word and we, we're, we're putting together a, a series on a topic, I, it, there's something about that that I need to know. And so um, over the next little while, I don't even have, a, uh, sometimes I'll do like a two or three week, I think I can get it. This is going to be one that's probably like, yeah, a little bit longer. Um, my, goal, my goal is to, to finish it within eight weeks, okay? Um, and, I, and, and follow right up. This, this is a lot about vision. This is a lot about, and, and I'm saying, what, what am I talking about vision? I'm going to recap. We're going to be recasting vision this fall. Um, really excited about that in my heart. Um, but this is, this, is, this is even before that. This is about Jesus. What's Jesus? Who's Jesus? Is it just this guy that gets me? Is it just this cool name, Jesus, that has become almost a sex symbol? Like Jesus, he gets me. So Jesus, because Jesus, because Jesus, I, you know, Jesus. I mean, he, he, he paid the price for everything. He's love, he's this, he's that. And, 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 and I feel like, the name of Jesus uh, has been so, uh, how do I say, uh, popularized, or not even popularized, but like used in um, uh, watered down maybe. Yeah, well, I, I hope you're trying to step, you can smell what I'm trying to step in. Just almost just, it's not holy. It's just common. It's just Jesus. But, it's, but who is Jesus? And so we're kicking off a series called I Am. Uh, this morning, I am like, you know, when, when Moses encountered God, uh, when he was out in the wilderness and he was just about his regular daily routine and all of a sudden he saw this burning bush off of the side and he's like, what in the world is going on over there? He wasn't, there was no holy moment here with it. He just was going about his day, saw this bush. He thought, man, I'm going to go see what's going on over there. And as he walks over there uh, and he gets closer the bush speaks, and he, tell, and, and he encounters the Lord, and the Lord says, take off your shoes, because you're standing on holy ground. I mean, even to the point of like it, meeting who, and us understanding who God is, it changes, it changes our, our approach. It changes, everything changes when we see him as he is. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that over the next couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> I want to I want to set up um, this morning's message in a way that I didn't put any notes to, and and so I and I didn't give it to you. It just hit me on the way down, and so I wanted just to look at this. 
um, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, uh, 14 through 16. This is, I'm going to really just hit in verse 15, Matthew 5, 15. It says that you are the light of the world. You are a city on a hill. I just want to stop right there. It doesn't say you're, you got to try to be light. It says you are light. So, so this is key for us to understand. Sometimes we're trying to be something and, and uh, instead of us just understanding that's who we are. And if we, when we understand what we are, it, then only from that place it, it, does it really become easier. Okay, You are the light of the world. It doesn't say you're going to be. It doesn't say you could be. It doesn't say you should be. Jesus said you are the light of the world. You are a city on a hill. That can, you are. He tells right in the verse before, you are salt. You are. Okay. Now, whether you're salty or whether you're turned on, right? That, that, that's it. But you are. So on the, us understanding our identity. And Jesus told the, his disciples, he said, um, I, I'm going to leave in Mark 16, uh, 15 through, through 18. I'm going to leave, um, but I, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. This is Mark, or not Mark, this is Mark, that's John. But the, in Mark, he says, now go and make disciples. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples. And he says, these signs are going to follow you that believe. And so what you, the signs that he describes there are light. Where there's darkness, you bring light. Where there's oppression, you bring light. It, it's, it's Luke chapter 4, where the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news. You know, this is what, this is what light's supposed to do. This is what light is supposed to do. And it's really important for us to understand that that's supposed to be happening. It, our lives, and so, but, but it takes you and I having an identity and who we are. And you and I being in Christ. And so this is important for us to understand who he is and who you are. Did you know we're called Christians? The Bible tells us that in, in, in Acts, it says that the, they were first called Christians in Antioch. In other words, people said, those people look like Christ. Now, who is Christ? If I go to John chapter 1, it tells us that in the beginning, I'm going to read this, John chapter 1, all the way through verse 14, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he, he was God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. And without him nothing was made. So the Word, and we know that the Word, let me just, this would be good reading to read again. But it tells us that the Word, he's light. Let me finish reading. Through him all things were made. Through who? The word. So this is <laughs> changing your words. How was things made? The word. Could, the, could our words be that important? They are that important. They're super, super, super important. And it's the same way Jesus, our words have, you know, there's been a, the, the teaching on the significance of your word, all of our words and what we say has, it, there was a time where they were watched and now there's a time where it's just like, whatever, or even to where, even in the, in, in a, in the church where in the word of faith or in, in the preaching where you see it, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Kind of not really, doesn't really matter, but I'm telling you what was made was made with words was made with the word. And he says this, and the word was, was God. And he was God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. And without him nothing was made. And this is why it's so important for you or my words to be in agreement with, with the word. Yes. Because in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And that light shines in the darkness, and darkness has not overcome it. So he goes on to say in verse 4, um, Let's just pick up in verse 9. The true light who gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and, and, and though the world was, was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to his own, and his own did not rec receive him. But to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of blood, nor of nor of the desire or the will of man, but born of God. I love verse 14. The word became flesh and, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one, the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus was the word. Jesus, light became, he's the one that came and dwelt among us. Jesus, light came. And this is what we're to look like. We're light, where light is, darkness can't be. This is what the, this is what the church of God is to be. My life should not be dark. 
And darkness should not be in where I'm at. But it takes me understanding, number one, first and foremost, who I am and who he is. And then what we're going to talk about this morning is who he is. We're going to talk about that over the next few weeks because it's so important for us to know who he is because from that place, our expectation changes. The Bible says that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. His people, not the world, but his people. In other words, they're taken advantage of or, or they're, they're, uh, they're, they're abused because they don't know what is theirs. Okay? And so um, let's, let's start here this morning. And this is the um, kick off the, the I Am series. And the title of this morning's message is Jesus Who? Jesus Who? <clears throat> We're going to talk about who Jesus is. The Bible, and I'm going to take a little bit different approach uh, at this this morning versus uh, just looking at what Jesus, looking at Jesus and maybe he's the light of the world. He's a this, and what, what he says he is. We're going to take a different look because Jesus is the Father manifest. That's who Jesus is. Sometimes we have this idea that Jesus and God are opposite. You know, Jesus is the loving God and, and like the, the homeboy, like the, your buddy, he gets me guy, where God is up there with the big stick. But that's not it at all. Jesus is God. This is important. This is the Trinity. This is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's the same way you and I were made, three-part being. And this is even important for us to know, spirit, soul, and body. Um, when I'm born again, what gets born again? Spirit. My spirit. Is my body perfectly perfect? No. That there's this outworking of my salvation. So when I am born again, if I have an addiction to pornography, could I still have an addiction to pornography? What's the difference? My heart now doesn't want that. My heart is, is the Holy Spirit brings conviction and my heart condemns me and says, that's wrong. Yeah. It says, nope, make, make that. So this is important. And the Bible says that, but I'm changed as I, as I behold the word of God. It's not my willpower that changes me. It's the word power. When I put myself before the word, it, it, it's what changes me. So here's what I'm saying. Am I saying it's okay to stay in that place? No, I'm not saying that. You, you, if we're going to follow God, we're going to grow. We, you can't stay the same. If you're following God, you're going to find that you're going to become, the Bible says, as you behold the word, you're changed from one degree of glory to the next to the next. Like there's this, there's outward, upworking, outworking. But this is important to know because otherwise sometimes you can be in that place where, well, are you even saved? Well, let me ask you this. Are, have you prayed for somebody? This is where it gets, anyway, it, it's so important to understand spirit, soul, and body. So again, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is God. There, there, do you know that, did you know that Jesus' will was no different than God's will? Did you know that when Jesus willingly laid down his life, that was the Father's will, but that was also Jesus' will? Free choice. Okay? And so I, wanted, I want you to see this, a couple, a couple verses here that are, are really important. John chapter 17, verse 6. Jesus says, and this is in the, he's praying for his disciples. He says, um, I have manifest your name to the, uh, to the men whom you have given to me out of this world. They, they were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. So here's what he's saying. I have manifest your name. This is what Jesus said. I, I said, here it is. You know, they could smell it, they could see it, they could taste it. They, they was, it was made real. It was, it was who he is, who God is, was brought into existence before the disciples. That's amazing. That, that's a powerful statement. Let me go. John 17, 26. Same passage. Uh, again, praying. He says this. And I have declared to them your name. This is out of the Hindu King James. I have declared to them your name. And I will declare it. That the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. So he's saying this. This is a really amazing statement. Let me read it again out of the ESV. I made known to them your name. I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. He says, this is an amazing thing. 
I, ha- I made known to them your name. I have manifest your name. I've not only declared it, but I've declared it to where they know it. They've understood it. They've experienced it. I have. That's a powerful statement. He doesn't say, I let everybody know who you are, except that one time when those disciples were getting on my nerves, you know, and I just was like, you can have that. Or that one time I was just tired of everything that was going on and I was hungry and I saw that fig tree and I was like, curse you. You know, it, no, he said, I have, I have perfectly displayed who you are to them. Your name. Your name meaning, naomos is this Greek word, but it really means your character. I have displayed to them your character. You've maybe heard these scriptures where it says that I, did, I only speak what the Father speaks. I only do what I see the Father do. Jesus said that I didn't come to do my own will, but only to please the Father. He was here to display the Father. That's it. So, Jesus who? Jesus who? He displayed the name of the Father. It's important for you and I to understand who God is. If we're going to understand who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. But yet, here's the crazy thing. Who Jesus is, is who God is. But where where we've gone from is that God is this, and Jesus is my homeboy. No, who Jesus is, is who God is. And who God is, is who Jesus is. And you'll find that they're just the same. The, 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 the same. And, and God, God so loved you that he sent his son Jesus to pay the price for you, for me, for the world. For the world. He loves the world. God loves the world like Jesus loves the world. I'm going to say that again. God loves the world like Jesus loves the world. God, the one that struck some people dead. God, the one who shakes rocks when he speaks. God, the one, lightnings and thunders. God, the one, the lion, the li- God, the one, God. God, the one that came to meet with the people before there was ever a covenant of don't do this and don't do that and don't do this. And he said, come down, I'm going to meet with them, but don't have them touch the mountain. And there was lightnings and fire and tremble. Like that's the one. Before there was ever do's or don'ts. When he met with Abraham, I am the Lord, El Shaddai, God Almighty. He knew him. He introduced himself. I am Almighty God. This is powerful. This is to understand that Abraham knew Almighty God. He knew God as he is. And and it's important that you and I would grab a hold of some of this this morning. Lord, open our eyes to see you as you are. Because when I pray in the name of Jesus, I'm praying in the name of El Shaddai. When I pray in the name of Jesus, I'm praying in the name of God Almighty. Not just Jesus, homeboy. Not just Jesus, maybe you know, like uh, in Jesus' name, Amen. Like. In the name of God Almighty. I mean, maybe we should start ending our, our, our prayers in the name of El Shaddai. We used to El Shaddai. Like, I think it would be cool to do like this, uh, this, this series on like Hosanna, Hallelujah, El Shaddai. Like, I don't know, you know, these words that are said, but we don't even know what they mean. You know, like just what is it? El Shaddai, the, the El meaning the Lord Almighty. It, the, there's an L you'll see in the Bible. It's used as the Lord. And then it, there's a descriptive word after that, the ever existing one or the Lord. It, it's L. We're going to look at this here this morning at some of these things. But it's important for us to know who Jesus is. It's important for us to know who God is. Jesus said, I, my whole purpose here on this earth was to show them you. And he did a good job. And this is why the Gospels are so powerful. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's the the account of these these men that that walked with Jesus, saw Jesus, and saw him go about doing good, healing all. Watched him and, and saw how he was upset with, dare I say, church people or you know like fair saying this but but not living this he was upset with that he said you should live like you say you're going to live jesus didn't like that matter of fact that was what he got the most upset with because you're giving a bad name to him you're christians but you don't look like him 
And so I don't want to be you. I don't want anything to do with him because I saw you. This is, it's, it's a big deal when you're supposed to look like him because we're light. These are, these are important things. So here we are, John 17, 26. That I have declared to them your name, and I will declare it, and that the love with which you love me may be in them. So <clears throat> Jesus reveals to man who God is in spirit. This is why it's like, well, you could say who God is because God is spirit. But yet spirit doesn't mean nothing. It's a substance. God is spirit. But so there would be no argument or you could not discount it who he is. He said, let me show your eyes. Let me allow you to put your hand in my hand. Let me, allow, let me walk with you. Let me show you. Let me, let me show you what redemption looks like. Let me show you what heaven on earth looks like. Matthew chapter 6 where he says, pray here on earth as it is in heaven, Right? Well, here on earth as it is in heaven is, is what would Jesus do? No, it's what did, Je- what did Jesus do? So many times we're like saying, what would Jesus do? Instead of what did Jesus do? Do what Jesus did. If we do what Jesus did, we'd see the results that Jesus had. But so many times we're like, well, what would Jesus do? Well, I don't know. Jesus would love. And, and this is so funny that we, uh, there was this video that we, my wife had seen and she shared with me about a week ago. We showed it to our staff, and one of the things that uh, th- this gentleman had said, he's like, you know, um, we, we have this idea that God is love, and he is love. He is. He's absolutely love. But uh, he, then he brought out the, 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 the fact that in the Bible, God is called love. God is love like two or three times, but yet he's called holy hundreds of times. So is God holy or is God love? Well, he's both. But he, he said, like, but in my generation, I would think that God is love must be in the Bible 300 times and God is holy like two times. So I don't understand who God is or who Jesus is because God is love. Jesus is love. So Jesus, and he tells us to love like Jesus loves. So we're just love. Jesus loves. And then we have this thought of what even love is, which is distorted. But let's look at who God is. Let's look at who Jesus is who revealed to us God. Okay? Now, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. It's important uh, before I get there, Acts eleven twenty six 26, um, that we do not approach uh, Scripture from culture. This is important. You and I are not to ap- approach Scripture from the culture. Like, culture says this, so Scripture must mean this. No, we are to approach Culture from Scripture. The, the hype thing is not what's going on. Let me just tell you, it's going to change. Bell bottoms are back in, right? Or whatever they, like, or maybe they, they, they it's, things change and it's crazy. It's crazy how it's like, it's just things change. So we face, we face culture from Scripture, not the other way around. Um, and, and culture is not what determines my conviction, My experience is not what determines my conviction. What I've heard somebody else say is not what determines my conviction. What is to determine my conviction is when I open the word and I see. Because the word of God will always it'll bring correction to my carnality and to my apathy. It'll, it'll, it's going to correct me every time I open the word. And correction is one of the best things that there is because it points us in the right direction. Like, I got to remember that when God, the Bible says that you are Ill, an illegitimate son or you, don't, you are, some translations still use the B word. They say you are a uh, B word. Yeah, other word. Can't even say it. Not from, if you don't get corrected. Acts eleven twenty six. 26, it says, when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. Well, so for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So th- there was something about their life that looked like Christ. They, they, they looked like him because they were partnered with him. Partnership takes agreement. So when I see it in the word, that it, I'm to come to agreement with that. 
So this agreement, like, oh, that's who God is? Okay. That's who he was. That's who he is. That's who Jesus displayed him to be. That's who he is to me. That's what I'm to look like. If I'm to look like, if I'm, he's going to be that for me. This is important for you and I to understand who God is because otherwise, how am I going to be light to the world? If, if, I have no, if I have no hope, if I have no expectation of good, well, I have no expectation of good if I don't know that God is a healer or that he's the one that brings me into victory or the one that's my righteousness or the one I have no idea. I have no, or that he's almighty, that, that there's an impossible situation, but I don't know God that is able to do beyond what I could even think in my mind. Okay, let's keep going here. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Oh, thank you, Lord. Children of God are led by the Spirit of God who are to be bringing the Word of God. This is, this is how, how Jesus, how, how our approach is to be. The Word, all right? The Word. So here we go. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Why is it so important for us to know who Jesus is? Why is it so important? Because for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. There is to be an encounter. There is to be a manifest. Have you ever, <laughs> this is maybe a gross way to put it. Have you ever accidentally passed gas in a, in a place and you just hope it's not manifest? <laughs> oh, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Where everyone is distinctly aware what you had for dinner or, you know, it's that pizza or what. They're distinctly aware, like, do you look over at your friend, you know, and if that was you that did it, you're like, you look over at your friend, you're like, bro, <laughs> right? But you're, it's manifest. Here's what he, he's saying. It, it's the man, we are the manifestation. We are the, we are to be that which makes the world distinctly aware. And it's to be a pleasing aroma. It's not to be a stinky aroma. It's to be a pleasing aroma that our lives are to have, that, they're, that, that it, everything looks this way, but all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just, my very existence changes. And that, the, 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 that analogy of passing gas is, is such a, a weak analogy compared to where there was darkness. And all of a sudden, when every, everything was cool, everything, or wasn't cool, it was dark, but everything just looked dark. It just, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, something hits me, and it's the light of God. It's the goodness of God. It's his kindness. It's the good news of the gospel. In the just, I, was, I was just here, and there was this aroma uh, uh, that, that was <sighs> pleasure. It, the Bible says it pleases God, but it, it's a, a pleasing aroma. It says to um, those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Your and my lives are to be pleasing. Thank you, Lord. So Ephesians chapter 5, 1 through 2. Therefore, he says, be imitators of God as dear children. So this is why I'm, I'm setting all this up to say it's important that we know who Jesus is. Because if we don't know who he is, how are we going to imitate him? If we don't know that he, he is God and that we pray in the name of El Shaddai. Not, you know, I, I'm using that. We pray in the name of Jesus. We come to the Father in the name of Jesus. But the name of Jesus is synonymous with Almighty it's synonymous with what we would hear as Yahweh or where you, and you're like a lot of us don't even have a clue what that means. But but it's important that we have some understanding and we have some bedrock foundation and look back and say, wait a minute, that's who? Wow, this really is good news. Wow, this is really good news. And that even the word good news would be an understatement. It's the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel is the power of God to experience salvation in my life. He saved me from what? The works of sin. Where it brought death. The gospel. This good news is really good news. If I see how good of news it really is and who God really is and the message that really came, all of a sudden it changes how I can am to imitate God, be imitators of God as dear children. He tells me to imitate God. That's what Jesus was doing. He was imitating God. So let's, let's, let's step it up a little bit instead of what would Jesus do. Let's step it up to what would God do because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. 
So Jesus doesn't live inside of you. The Spirit of God lives inside of you. And so now you're not limited to, oh, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus, my homeboy, but I'm going to pray in the name of God Almighty who lives on the inside of you. And it's, I'm to be imitating and carrying a message of good news and carrying light. But I have to see it. I have to, under, I have to, I have to receive it. I have to receive these, here's what's so crazy, words. I have to receive these words. You know what's so crazy? Is we're receiving words every day. We're receiving words, shoot, we'll pull out our phone and receive words that just, that we don't even like. We're like, oh yeah, that's just the way it's going to be. Well, I mean, have you ever had something break and you're like, figures, yep, here we go again. We're receiving a report that that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. That's how tomorrow is going to be. Uh, yep, end of the month, too much month for my bills. Figures, words, I'm just receiving words all the time. But if I'm going to walk as God designed me to walk as light in this world, I have to receive the words of God as truth. The Bible tells us that the words of God were like, they were like life to me and I did eat them. They were like, oh, these are so good. It's, 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 it's changing me. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, did not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is made to be renewed by the word of God. It has to be renewed. Otherwise, the world, I will just look like the world. I'll be this little light of mine with a bushel over it all the time. This is how my life will live because, because the world has conformed me, captured me, even though inside of me is the very power of God unto what? Salvation. The works of God. But it has to come out. And you'll find that it comes out. It comes out of you and me when we understand, number one, our identity. And our identity, we understand that we have been placed here as the body of Christ to be Jesus' hands and feet and to occupy until he comes. That we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That means to declare boldly with authority and unmistakably the truth of God's word. So unmistakably, that if I was going to pray here on earth as it is in heaven, I would pray at not what would Jesus do, but what would Jesus did. I would pray, I would pray, what did Jesus do in that situation? Do that. When somebody is, when somebody is, is oppressed, what did Jesus do? Find the place where Jesus was oppressed, or not Jesus was oppressed, but there was an oppressed person and Jesus saw them. What did he do? How did he deal with it? Deal with it that way. What did Jesus do? When there was lack, what did Jesus do? What, tell me how he did. He looked to heaven. What did, what did Jesus do? This is important. Okay, and it matters what you call Jesus. Did you know it matters what you call Jesus? And did you know you can't call Jesus what Jesus is from just right here? The Bible even tells us this, that the, this is how we're born again. What you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, your heart can capture who God is even when this right here can't. There's this woman in, in the Bible that the, the Lord, he, she approached the Lord and she said, Lord, if you can heal me. And the Lord said, if I can. He said, if you can believe. And she said, I believe. But help my unbelief. There's this war going on. I, there's this war going on. Help my unbelief. And, and she was made whole. That your heart can grasp things that your head can't. This is how the, the, the children of God are to be led by their spirit, not their mind, not their, not their natural man, but the inside, by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God. All right, so it says this, um, Matt, uh, let's go here, Matthew, real quick, Matthew 16, 15 through 17, Jesus said to Peter, but what about you? So I'm asking you this morning, what about you? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon Jonah, for this was not revealed to you, you didn't come about, about this knowledge by what you saw, what you tasted, by what you felt, or by what grandma saw, or by some past experience. What you just answered about the situation, about the question at hand, you answered from here. 
You know, your heart can believe things that your head can't. Your heart. Thank God. Like even like this idea of sowing. We, we, we can believe it when it comes to planting corn seed, but when it comes to understanding that when we sow, which is what this is talking about, is talking about sowing financially. That financial seed, ah, I can't I can't grip my mind around that because I'm I, I don't I I don't get that. But my heart can yeah. The Lord said that. That's a principle. Yes. That's in his word. He said it. I'm going to believe it. Yes. Be it done unto you according to what you... How? Believe. So this is, goes right back to what Landon was talking about earlier. Well, what were you expecting? What were you believing? Yeah. yeah. So even salvation, how are you born again? People ask this question, well, you've got to believe. In your heart. And say with your mouth. Like you have to. It's not just like well. If it works if it does. Like I mean I'll say. Well I'll say anything. Probably want a cracker. Right. I mean. Like I, I could say anything. But what do I believe? Like did. did, did the, the Bible tells us that he comes and he stands right here. And he knocks. If I open that door. If I open that door like yeah I need him. Then you believe. When you just answer that, I need him. I know I need him. And with mouth, the heart man believes, but with the mouth, confession is made. Romans 10. Let's look here again. 2 Corinthians 4, 5, and 6. So this is, this is important for you, to, you and I to understand and for me to even talk to you today. I'm not talking to you about my righteousness. I'm not talking to you about my holiness. I'm not talking to you about you should believe. And I'm not talking to you about faith. I'm not talking to you about anything other than who he is. This is what Paul says to the church at Corinth. He says this, for we do not proclaim ourselves, but we proclaim Jesus Christ. We proclaim the Lord Almighty. We proclaim the Lord who provides. We proclaim the Lord who was, who is. That's who we proclaim to you. What I come to proclaim to you in a place of sickness, I proclaim the Lord who heals thee, who we see in Jesus. I proclaim Jesus to you. When, I, when, you're, when somebody's oppressed, I don't come and say, well, let me just lay hands on you because I'm holy and I'm righteous and I can believe God. No, I come to proclaim to you the Lord who delivers. Jesus Christ, Almighty. I'm coming to proclaim Jesus. I'm not coming to proclaim um, Word of faith. I'm not coming to proclaim Pentecostal or Baptist or whatever it might be. I'm coming to proclaim to you the Lord Almighty. That's it. And, and we get to see the Lord's will and the Lord's the perfect picture of God and what he's, his desire is in Jesus Christ. That he, When he went about and he did good, that's a good place to start. What does it look like to do good according to God? And I'm not trying to yell this morning. I'm just saying, like, I'm not preaching to you anything other than Jesus. Let's preach Jesus. And I want to preach Jesus. When I, when I see a situation, let's preach Jesus. Let's declare almighty God over a situation. Let's preach Jesus in those situations. Not just my, well, I hope. But let's just preach Jesus. I can just declare in the name of Jesus. That's it. In the name of God almighty. Because Jesus said, this would go back, we'll pick back up here, John 17, 26. I have declared to them, I have manifest to them, I have made known to them to where they get it. They've experienced it. They know. I, they, 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 I didn't just show them. I showed them, and I showed them again, and I even said, okay, you saw me do it. Now I'm going to send you out, and now I'm going to watch you do it. Yeah. And then you're going to come back, and then we're going to, and now he said, now... You watched me. I watched you. You got this. I'm going away, and I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Not Jesus, but the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to live and dwell inside of you. I'm here to tell you this morning, the power of God is on the inside of you to affect and to eradicate darkness here on this earth. 
You are the light of the world. Jesus who? Jesus you. Jesus you. You. Christ in you. The hope of glory. The, Christ is the anointing. The anointing. The spirit of God. The anointing. The, the Bible talks about how the, the anointing, or they were, these priests, or the, not the priests, but the kings would be anointed. It, it, it was this representation when they dump oil on that, that, that the spirit of God would come upon them. That was that representation to lead. The Spirit of God would come upon a king. But it wouldn't be in, the, in them, but it would be upon them. But now, we have it within us. And we have it within this fragile, natural body that can only be here so long so that it would be known that that which is in me isn't by me. The Bible tells us that we have this, this, this power in earthen vessels. Can you imagine if you lived for 400 years and you walked in the power of God? Like, let's just go back like Jesus wants us to, but let's just say Peter. 400 years you walk by people and just your shadow. 400 years. Can you imagine the pride game you'd be playing? Moses knew God. He actually spoke to him face to face and he didn't get to enter into the promised land. Why? Because he came to know the power of God so well that he said, I'm just going to hit the rock again. And guess what came out? Water. He hit the rock because the Lord told him to. The next time the Lord told him to speak to it, this is after he'd watched the works of God amazingly. And he says, God, pride. And the Lord said, you're not going in. Because you can't go in in that way. Can you imagine, though? Isn't that, I, I'm so thankful. We, we sometimes we go, I was sitting, I got up, I couldn't sleep last night. A lot of times Sunday morning, it's like that for me. I'll, I, I, my mind is going on, and I just, I woke up, and the lightning was so great. All, like, from 3 o'clock, I'm, like, looking west out my bedroom window. It's like, shh, shh, I can't go back to sleep. So I'm praying in the Spirit, and I'm just like, and I get up. And I, I go to side. I'm going to go because I can't sleep to sit in this room that is all windows looking to the west and the lightning, lightning. And I'm just thinking about the Lord, just the thankfulness is coming over me. And I'm thinking about my kids. I'm thinking about my oldest boy who's going to be 19 on Wednesday. And I'm thinking, God, where is the time gone? It's, you know, it's 345. And I'm like, and I just hear in my heart, haven't I been good to you? And I think, oh. And I just begin reflecting on just goodness. And I was thinking, he's been so good to me that even we look at sometimes as, as where we look at the end of this body, this life, it's not the end. It's actually his mercy to, to, to curb pride and sin in this earth. It's a works of death, but yet it's God still working in even all of this that... But I'm telling you, I don't want to be 85 years old, 90 years old, and not know the power of God. I don't want to be 41 years old and not know the power of God. Because Christ in me is the hope of goodness. It's the hope of glory, manifest presence of God. It's in you, it's in me. So we, we got to know that he is in us. Christ in us, but not just the same. God is in you and me. Bring him into this. And this is not heresy. This is the Bible. And this is 100% theological sound. Over and over and over and over. The problem is we've gotten too much of our eyes in our approach. Or too much of our eyes in our belief. Instead of our heart. Where, we, where the Lord's like, hey, and you'll speak something, and you could conceive it. How do you know when you're in faith? When your heart, when even your, your heart's like, yeah, that's possible. And your mind begins to think, yeah, that's possible. Because <laughs> I'm not conformed. I'm not constrained. But I've been transformed because, hey, I'm going to do that because that's what God said. And, and I'm going to sow, and the Lord's going to make it work. Okay. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
Let's, let's, so um, I, I, I got, let me just take, uh, we're going to go to three scriptures and we're going to do a, a mostly reading and then we're going to pick back up because this is a longer, a longer series. But it's important for you and I to know who Jesus is. Jesus is God. Okay. Now, Genesis chapter 1.1. One, one. We're going to talk about four names that we see of who, uh, God in the Old Testament. Okay. Four names. You're going to see the word Yahweh. Okay. Which in, in all Hebrew, Hebrew, it's W Y, excuse me, W H, okay, Y H W H, Yahweh, with no vowels, because it was too holy to say. Okay, it was too holy for them to say, so they, they put that in there just like Y H W A. In, in more modern translations, the, the, the Y has been changed for a J, like when it was. A, translated Anglican, like 800 years after Jesus. And so this is where we got Yahweh, but we also get Yehovah or Jehovah. Okay. So it's the same word. It's just that our translations changed to where their J goes in there. So this is where you hear Jehovah Jireh. It was actually Yahweh originally. So you can't, you, sometimes we mix those up, but Yahweh and Jehovah are the same all through the Bible. It's over 6,800 6, times that, 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 that name is used. Yahweh, okay? And what does that mean? It means a covenant-keeping God. It's how God, who I am, and how I deal with you. Who I am. Who I say I am. Okay? Then you have this other one, Elohim. Elohim means creator God. One true God. The creator. Elohim. Okay? And El, you'll find the El is before many things. This is where you get El Shaddai. Or you get this word El El Elion, which means the Most High, or El Olam, which means everlasting. I, these are words that you don't hear all, all the time, but it just means the Lord who is everlasting, the Lord who is all present, the Lord who is almighty, the Lord, El, okay? The Lord, and then, a, then an adjective after that. So you have Yahweh or Jehovah, okay? Same, those are the same word, same. And then you have Elohim, which is the creator, and you have Adonai. Adonai uh, means Lord, like maybe you've heard the song, Adonai, Adonai, like, like I'm not going to sing this old school song, but Adonai, it just means Lord. It means master. It means my king. So the, we, we use that. And yet we use Lord, we in English, we use Lord or Lord God or God or like we don't have really the differentiation of these. And so sometimes we're hindered of to where the name of God can become common. Like, oh my God. Like, that just, I don't know, from a kid, that just, every inside of me just, ooh. and that, let alone GD. But just something. And I, here's, a, here's the thing that for me, even for me, like, I, when I write the name God or Jesus, like, I gotta capitalize it. Like, when it doesn't capitalize, I gotta go back. Is it an inconvenience? No, it's an honor. No, it's an honor. It's just a conviction. It's just, it's just, it's, where's the honor due my name? You know, I capitalize my wife's name, you know, and put circles and hearts around it and exos and all that. Surely I could do that with the Lord's. So we have Yahweh, Elohim, Adonai, and then you see El all the way through. But Genesis chapter one, this is where we first see the name God. In the beginning, God, God Elohim. God the Creator, okay? This is important for us to... This foundation, we got to understand that... Did you know that we're talking about Jesus who revealed the names of God? Jesus revealed the names of God. Hey, I revealed God to the disciples, to all these of yours. I revealed... You know, he revealed the Creator. Give you... Maybe there was two loaves and... What did he reveal to them? Creator. So let me just say this to you. Even this is a, this one, we're not going to take time on this right now, but did you know there's a creator on the inside of you? But we're so limited to everything that we see and only what we can grab, but there's a creator on the inside of you. Now, am I saying that we should just, uh, Mr. Aladdin, sir, da, 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 da. No, 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 this is, no, it's what does the Lord need? This, the, the, let me just tell you, the loaves and fishes didn't only happen one time in the Bible. It's happened many times since in the body of Christ. 
where God had need of something and he did, wasn't limited by natural means. God's not limited to, uh, for, uh, well, I need a leg or I need an elbow or I need that. Well, fresh out of those. He's the creator God. He said, stand up on your feet. <laughs> oh, wait. In the silver and gold, I don't have any. So we see Jesus doing this, but then we see Peter on the way. I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have, what I do possess, in the name of what? Al- Almighty. In the name of Jesus. I'm trying to make this correlation for Jesus who? Jesus God Almighty. The name of Jesus. Wow, Jesus. The name above every name? Yeah, I mean, we say that, but what is it? Like, could we hold that? Could we hold that here? In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Because Mark 16, 15 says, you go make disciples. It doesn't say Pastor Nate. It says us, you, me, you, we. You were created in this time. You, God knew you. He formed you to, to be a voice, to be his hand in this time and in this place. He said, and these signs would follow those who have it all together. Who've done everything right in the, No. Who what? Believe. Who believe. Did you know believing's a choice? Yes. To whether I'll yield to here or to this. Yes. Can I tell you something that we're actually doing this this um, tonight? And I'll pick right back up here. I only have one more uh, well, I got a couple more. Um, we're gonna, we're, we haven't been doing this enough. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, when you give, when you pray, when you fast. We haven't fasted enough. Our family, I'm talking. And I, and I can tell you because I haven't, this church hasn't. Fasting tells this body, this man, your mind, your senses, how you feel and how you think doesn't call the show. Doesn't run the shots. You know who does? Right here. I'm no longer my own. I've been bought with a price. So here's what fasting does. It denies this body and even how you think the right to lead or to direct my life. But instead, and so what you'll find when I, when I, if, when I fast and I lay that stuff down, like food and, like, and I, for, for, for a spiritual reason that I'm, Lord, I want, I want to be tender towards you. Just like, I want to be led by what you're saying, not by, a, I'm hungry. Did you hear that? It's lunchtime. It's 11 o'clock. No, no, I'm laying that down. I was in the shot at you, Landon. 12, 12. What I'm saying is this. Fasting is key for you and I to live lives pleasing to the Lord instead of just pleasing to our bellies. So Genesis chapter 1, 1, we see, we see Elohim. Here's what's so cool. Genesis chapter 2 is the chapter where God creates man. And you'll find in Genesis 2, 4, I, I only gave you 2, 4, we'll just go there. It says, then this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made them. And he, the next verse, he talks about how he took dust and he took man and he breathed life into it. But the word here is not Elohim. It's this. It's the Lord God made them. The Lord is Yahweh, the covenant-keeping relation. How I'm going to deal with man. This is it. When I made all of this, you got to understand, when he made all of this, he made it good. He made it good because he had the mind and he's introducing himself to you, to me, to mankind right here. He said, let me read it again. Genesis 2, 4, this is, on, this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made them. It wasn't just God in the beginning, God. It was the Lord God. So it's Yahweh Elohim. It's a covenant-keeping God, a God that even in, the, in creation, he knew the end from the beginning. Even when he created Adam, he knew that Adam would fall. But even in that, I'm, I already know that I, and I want to introduce myself in this way right now that I'm going to keep my covenant with you. I'm going to create you, but I'm going to make a way for you because I love, this is, this is God, God Almighty. This is God Elohim. This is God, our Yahweh, a covenant keeping relational God. 
Whew, that's powerful. He already knows what's going to be going on with you and what's going on with me. We're not surprising him at all. And this is why he gave to you and me and he, his, his spirit inside of us because he wants us to manifest him and his goodness because his goodness is not contingent upon my goodness. His goodness is not contingent upon my goodness. And the world is so limited if it's contingent upon my goodness. And let me remind you, there is none good but him. And there's nothing good except for what comes from him. So what you did out of the goodness of your heart, you did because God was in you. And it was his goodness that drove you to even do that. We say this around here a lot of times that because the love of God lives in you, you can be satisfied by nothing except that which satisfies your father. We wonder why we want to give. We wonder why maybe if we're not giving and we're only thinking about ourselves and everything's, if we would just change our approach and be outward, how all of a sudden it would lift us up out of that pit. You know what I found? If you want out of a pit, <laughs> just reach out. Let, let me, we're going to close with Exodus chapter 3 and, and 6. All right, listen, well, I'm just going to read it because this is a Exodus 3. This is the encounter of the burning bush. And I'm not going to take time to go to the beginning of Exodus 3 when Moses is in the wilderness. But he is talking to the Lord like, who are you? He doesn't know who he is. He's heard of who he is because he is a Hebrew. He is a, he is a, a son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, he, so he's aware of God, but he does, he's never met him. He doesn't know his name. He doesn't know. He's even like, uh, okay. Look, look, Exodus 3.13. Moses said to God, suppose I go. Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, well, then what is his name? It's important that you and I know his name. You cannot go to somebody else. With boldness, if you don't know, you're coming in the, na in the name of what? This is, this is why it's so important for you and I to know the name of Jesus. Because you and I won't go. Suppose I go. What allowed him to go was him having an encounter and the Lord saying, I am. Can you imagine? I love Prince of Egypt. I, I, I almost grabbed that this morning. We're going to have that next week when we actually talk about I am. But, um, oh, Prince of Egypt, when that boy, ooh, oh, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Can you imagine God speaking up and saying, I am? Like, just, ooh, can you just imagine all of who he is speaking? But he says, suppose I, suppose I go. What's your name? What is your name? What shall I tell them? Verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you're to say to the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, this is the Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. I seen you where you're at. I see. See, this is so powerful when you think about God, the covenant keeping God. When I'm in the midst of something, when I'm in the midst of that I have a God. Jesus is a covenant-keeping God. He said, tell them, I'm a covenant keeper. <sighs> Go tell them that I'm a covenant keeper. I need to hear that. You're a covenant keeper. The God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. You know, you can go boldly in, in, into the world and you can carry preaching Jesus. Everywhere you go, you can go and you can say this. God sent me to you. Think of that. Where there's darkness, God sent you and me. Thank you, Lord. He said this, he says this, he says, 
the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. And this is my name forever. Somebody better underline that, highlight that in your Bible. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation to generation. It's time we start calling him. You're a covenant keeping God. If you said it in your word, you'll do it. If you said it, my be- if you said it, if you said it, you said it. You've heard it said, and I've heard this, uh, this approach be uh, s- like slandered. I be- God said, I believe it. That settles it. This is my name forever. This is the name you should call me from generation to generation. He's a covenant-keeping God. That's what he said. God said it. God said it. Who am I to stand above what God says and who he says he is. That's an awful prideful place. Exodus 6, 6 through 8. Therefore tell the Israelites, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the covenant keeping God. And I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. So where you're in bondage, I'll deliver you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. He's not, he's still, his arm hasn't it's been shortened today. I will take you as my own people. I will be your God, and then you will know that I am the Lord, the covenant-keeping Elohim, God, who brought you out from underneath the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. You will call my name Yahweh. You will call my name the covenant-keeping God yesterday and from now for every generation. This is why when you read the Bible and you see what God did for somebody, you go, that's cool because that's who he was and that's who he is and that's who he'll be. There's faith that comes when I see who God is and then I get to see it in Jesus Christ who displayed perfectly who he is. You'll find that as we look and we look at who God says, I am Jehovah, the Lord who heals you, or Yahweh. Yahweh would be a better, that's the original, but Jehovah is more modern, okay? But he's, when you see that, you say, wow, if you're the victory, where do I see Jesus display that? Right here, right here, right here. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, that's who he is. All of a sudden, I, I, I stand in awe of who he is. And that he'll make a way when there was no way. When there's a Red Sea, it's impossible. And they're surrounding me on every side. What are you going to do? Quit complaining to me. Go. Whew, that's powerful. Deuteronomy 4, 32 through 40. Indeed, ask me now from one end of the heavens to the other about the days that long preceded you. From that day that God created man on the earth, has anything as great as this ever happened or been reported? He's talking about the people of God experiencing him. Has anything ever ever been reported like this? Has a people ever heard the voice of God speak out of the fire as you have and lived? Or has anyone tried to take as his own, a nation out of another nation by trials, signs, and wonders. In other words, has anybody ever been pulled out of Egypt, out of slavery, by the trials, the signs, the wonders, and war, by a strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? Frogs and boils and water turned to blood and locusts and, I mean, And yet, through it all, they were preserved. You were shown these things, bold, highlighted, underlined, so that you would know that the Lord, Yahweh, is God. That you would know that the covenant-keeping God is God. You've got to know at this time, the Lord tells all of the children of Israel, throw away all the other gods. You know the gods that you've been praying to for rain? You know the gods you've been praying to for this? You know the gods you've been praying to for that? You know the Powerball you've been praying to to hopefully get you out? You know the pro... Throw away those gods. Throw away the crutch, the dependency. Throw away the God that says that the... I'm just telling you, you... 
Well, the only hope for me is what the doctor can prescribe. Throw away the God of only what the doctor can describe. And remember that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt with a strong hand, not one sick or feeble among you. I am the Lord your God. You were showing these things. You were showing, you were manifest these things. Jesus came to show you these things so that you would know that the Lord, the covenant Yahweh keeping God is God. And besides him, there is none. There's none besides him. He let you hear his voice from heaven to discipline you. And on earth, he showed you his great fire. And you heard his words out of the fire because he loved your fathers. He chose their descendants after them and brought you out of Egypt by his presence and great power to drive out before you nations greater and mightier than you and to bring you into their land and give it to you for you or for to you for your inheritance as it is this day know therefore that this day and know therefore this day and take heart that the lord the covenant keeping god is god in heaven above and earth below there is no other keep his statutes keep his ways his commandments which i am giving to you today so that you and your children after may prosper and that you may live long in the land that the lord your god is giving you for all time Joshua 24, 14. This is the last verse. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away, throw away all other gods. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshiped before or beyond the Euphrates in Egypt and serve the covenant keeping God. Serve the Lord, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. It's important that we know Jesus. Who Jesus who? Jesus. Almighty Jesus, covenant keeping. Jesus, God. Let's stand this morning. Thank you for your attention. But more than that, thank you, Father, for the ministry of your your spirit to be a teacher and to imprint on our hearts. and bring evidence to our minds. The proof of our heart, evidence to our minds, transformed. Yeah, thank you for even transformed, our minds being transformed. Let's just lift lift our hands to the Lord if you're just asking him to transform your mind, to think the way he thinks. Not the way that Pastor Nate thinks. Not the way that some other theology thinks or or in no way hindered other than, Lord, have your way in me today. Renew my mind. uh, Transform my mind. Open my eyes to see you as you are. And we pray Ephesians chapter 1 over our, our own minds right now. We pray that the eyes of our understanding, our heart, would be enlightened and then we would come to know in our mind the hope, the picture to which we've been called. The exceeding greatness of the, of the inheritance, the power, the inheritance uh, that which you've given to you and me. Father, you gave to your children, to your church. We are not under-equipped to live a victorious life here on this earth. We are not under-equipped. You have given us the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead to live on the inside of us. You are the creator, God. You are the provider. You are the victory. You are the one who is the lead and the guide. You are almighty. And we're well-equipped. We're well-able. We're well able. So, Father, thank you this morning for giving us the teacher, the Holy Spirit, to show us who you are. You said that you would only, he would only speak what the Father tells him to speak. Thank you, Lord, that we don't leave you in this church. We don't leave you... uh, but we take you with us in every situation and everything in our life, Father, and in the lives of others. We thank you that you would show yourself strong on our behalf.
our behalf because you are a covenant keeping God. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Before we dismiss this morning, you know, I don't want to close the service if, if uh, somebody's here that doesn't know Jesus, never made Jesus the Lord of your life. The Bible says that, <clears throat> that you and I, uh, there's no hope for us except for Jesus. But he said that he made a way when there was no way by sending his son Jesus. So if you, if you don't know where you'd spend eternity, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and this morning you know in your heart you've got to get right with the Lord uh, or give your life to him, I want you to lift your hand right where you're at. Thank you, Lord. And make it tall and bold and strong so we can see it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You might be saying this morning, I just, a prayer of consecration. I need to, uh, Pastor, would you lead me in a prayer of consecration to give my, to consecrate my life back to him? It seems like I've been walking away from him. If that's you right there, I will, I'd love to lead you in a prayer of consecration, bringing your life back to Jesus. Any hands? Any hands? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. I, um, unless I, I didn't see any hands. So, thank you, Lord. I'm going to lead you in the prayer of consecration. This is one of the most powerful prayers you can pray. Uh, when, when, when you know you've been guilty, when you know that you missed it, it might be gossip, it might be sex, it might be smoking, it might be missing it when you should have asked, prayed with someone to receive Jesus and you were too scared because what are they going to think of you? Anybody that knows what to do and doesn't do it, that's sin. This is the prayer you pray just to bring you back. I'll just lead you in it. Just, it's the expression of your heart. Just say this. Say, Father, I turn back to you to lead my life. Strengthen me to follow you. I choose and I acknowledge you as Lord of my life. Direct my steps. I will follow you. I turn from my ways and I trust in yours. I give you my life. Do something awesome with it. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you guys Wednesday night for the uh, water park. And then don't forget Chick-fil-A. Order it. $7 on the app. <laughs>